Hello and welcome back to Legends of the Dead. In between episodes, I have been taking a look at our court, figuring out what we need and what we already have and who we need to get rid of. So, let's start with what we need. What we need immediately is more champions. Why do we need more champions? Well, let me show you. If we head into our military and have a look at champions, ooh, we've got someone to recruit who has 22 prowess. That's fantastic. You'll see that each point of prowess gives you 100 damage and 10 toughness. So, this guy effectively has 220 toughness and 2,200 damage. This, compared to, say, a Bondi, is quite significant. He is worth 10 Bondi in terms of his toughness, roughly, and he's worth like 100 Bondi in terms of his damage. That's a huge amount of troops at this point in time, right? Remembering that we only have like 700 troops in total. If this guy is worth 100, like that's pretty good. That's something that we can work with. And that's why we really need to focus on getting prowess up early in the game. And not having champions is just like, it's just a bad situation to have. Because we have two slots which can be used which are doing nothing for us. We, if we recruit this guy, we just get this bonus and there's no negative, there's no downside, there's no, well this guy was giving us 9 and now we're getting like a 13 so it's only really a 4 prowess increase. No, this is just a straight up upgrade to our court. So actually, I think immediately I just want to recruit this guy, he only costs us 18 as well, this guy is incredible. And he's a berserker, which is I guess why he has such high prowess, but it also gives him a little extra martial on top of that. His stats aren't that bad. Yeah, okay. Okay. You're going to be recruited. Let's get Arnie in. Right. So immediately, we become a little bit stronger. Now, when I said that he has these numbers, that's actually the base number. This base number is multiplied, or, yeah, multiplied by the champion effectiveness. So he's actually uh, 27%. That's probably not the correct way of saying it. But, like... He is at 127% efficiency, so the value of this is 127% of 100, if that makes sense. So, oh, that would be 127 per point. You know, it's not that hard when you think about it. So, um, he is even, even stronger, and if we can get ways to boost our champion effectiveness, we can be even, even, even stronger, and you can see how this works really, really well early game, because um, early game this guy is a much larger proportion of your army. Obviously, late game, when you're talking like in the hundreds of thousands of troops, much less impact, but still important to think about. So, that's us got that guy, and that puts us up to five of six. It just doesn't calculate until you um, unpause the game. Now, we do also have a bunch of people in our court, in this filter I've got here, who are unmarried. Um, we have this person, we also have this person, and we have this person. Now, one of these people, we should in theory marry off matrilineally in order to drag somebody into our court. Because if we can do that, that gets us one more uh, champion, and it really doesn't matter what their stats are. As long as they uh, have a reasonable amount of prowess, they're going to give us a huge amount of increase in battles. So, uh, I looked at these three, and I thought, actually... We could probably get rid of Ear. Her stats are not good, and she has a genetic trait which we don't want to pass on to other people in our court. We don't really need uh, Thruthrither. I think that's how you'd say that. I have no idea, but that's how I've been told in the past. Um, she doesn't really do anything for us. She's a craven, so she's sinful towards our religion. We could probably get rid of her. And then that leaves us with Asta, who actually has reasonably okay stats, I think that we could realistically marry her off and end up with uh, something good. So let's just see if anybody will marry her to start with, matrilineally. Uh, and they have to not be in my court. Um, is there a way of saying not in my court? No. Okay. Uh, let's go for prowess and let's see who is actually available. So there's only a singular person out of everybody who will marry her. Uh, and it's this guy. This guy only has 9 prowess, he is pretty old, but he would probably do, right? 9 prowess is not amazing, but it's better than what we've got, which is, as I said, 
zero because we have nobody fulfilling that role right now. He is also a bit sinful. He's not the best, but he's literally the only option we have available to us. So let's drag him into our uh, core. Right, next thing I want to do, I did do that matrilineally, right? <laughs> well, I hope I did. Right, uh, next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of, I'll keep you just in case actually. You know what, we'll get rid of them in a second. I want to get rid of the other two, but let's just see um, if I did everything correctly. So yes, he did join our court. I just wanted to make sure, I was like, I'm sure I clicked the matrilineal uh, button, but there we go. So he's done that, the other person's been recruited, we now are now at our max number here, and we have six out of six champions. That's fantastic news for us, that's a good situation for us to be in. Right, now we're gonna get rid of the other people in our court who are not very good. We're gonna get rid of you. Uh, I'm just going to straight up dismiss you. Be gone. And then I'm going to do that to the other person as well. And we're going to want to do this regularly because if we don't do it regularly, then uh, this whole plan falls completely to the wayside and becomes very difficult to deal with because we have a ton of people in our court doing pretty much nothing. Now, uh, do we have anybody who would be better in any of these roles? I think our marshal can improve. Yeah, Arnie, our new champion, can definitely be our marshal. That seems like a good role for him. Means that he's much better, but also means that instead of just having a chance for your characters to die, there's also a chance for positive side effects, which is good to see. Um, and then who was the other guy? The other guy was this one. Uh, he could maybe fill this role? Yeah. Let's put him in there. Lowers this by a month. We're improving our court bit by bit. Now, does that mean that that person now has no role in our court? It does indeed mean that that person now has no role in our court. I'm also going to dismiss them. Now, I don't think this is optimal. It is going to give us stress, but I, that's kind of how I want to play this series. I only want to have good people in my court, so I'm going to get rid of you. We'll have the stress level. Oh, it's in blue now. Okay, that's fine. Right, so now we've done that. I also want to see if there's any role in here that I want to have a look at before we go back to more raiding. Um, oh, are, do we have a better uh, wet nurse? No. Do we have a better court physician? Also, no. Okay. Um, just going down here. They did say that they changed how all of these look, and they do actually look uh, pretty good. Oh, there's also positions with tasks now. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, we'll untick that for now. I just want to see if any of these give us like a benefit that we would immediately want. Maybe the prestige from a personal champion could be nice. I mean, that would at least mean that we're not losing prestige when at peace, which we are because we have unraised men at arms. Uh, Court Chronicler would actually be a much better way of doing that. If somebody who's average at it costs 0.06 per month, how much would they give us? They would give us 0.25 prestige per month. It at least stops our prestige from going negative. That'd be good. What else can they do? So you can search for legends. It increases prestige. Every year we'll have a random chance to increase let or to gain a legend seed. So a legend seed, I believe, if I go and have a look at the legends menu, which is this one. Oh, I have a seed available already. It's one of these things. So these things don't really do anything right now. They're just here, right? They're just something that could happen in the future. Now we could then, in theory, try and um Yes. We could try and invest into this one, which would then allow us to get modifiers at the cost of maintenance. What are these modifiers? So it gives you some level of renown, of depending, I assume, on the level of fame of the legend. Some level of stewardship and renown. And then some level of development growth and popular opinion. Okay. So it's owner modifiers, legend promo- Oh, this is legend promoter modifiers. There's a ruler that supports another ruler's legend. Oh, okay. Uh, a legend promoter gets extra bonuses that vary depending on the legend type and legend quality of the legend in exchange for a monthly gold contribution. Interesting. So this would be the benefit that we would get if we could get this to happen. This would be the benefit that somebody else could get if they backed us. And then these are the benefits that the barony and the counties get. 
Okay. That's an interesting uh, idea. So this maintenance, in theory, is basically like a maintenance being paid out to this guy. Not directly, I assume. I assume it's not, like, linked in that way. But that's kind of how it works on the next level up, right? Like, um, that's kind of how it should work thematically. Are there any other legends in the world? No, there's no legend in the world that's currently actually being supported. Okay. But yes, so what this one effectively does is this allows us to get legend seeds which would then be new things that we could potentially invest ourselves into. It could be that actually we want a legend about this thing or that thing, and that will give us these modifiers, which then the more legend seeds we have, the more modifiers we have to choose from. Okay, next one. Legend spread chance. Okay, this character is tasked with glorifying their liege's legend within the realm, amplifying its spread. So I assume that spread is linked to is linked into its quality. Uh, the quality of a legend marks both its strength of its effects and the reach of its spread, as well as affecting its final rewards. Legends can be famed, illustrious, or mythical. Um, for there is no such thing as a common legend. The quality can be increased by spreading the legend to more baronies and paying an upgrade cost. When the owner of a legend dies, their family can continue it with no damage to its quality. Okay. So, um, yeah, spreading it to more places, it becomes a bigger legend, it does more things. Got it? And then we have this one. Every year, one of your vassals or neighboring rulers may make your legend their own legend. Higher levels of aptitude increase this. Owned legend is a legend owned by a ruler who is the main beneficiary of its effect. The owner of a legend can be its legend protagonist, but it's not necessary. Oh! Legend protagonist is the main character of a legend whose deeds are therein described. The owner of a legend can also be its legend protagonist, but so can any member of their family, dead or alive, so long as they're 16 years old. Legend protagonists get no direct bonuses themselves, but the content about the legend will be focused on them. They will, however, grant additional legitimacy to the legend owner based on how many virtuous traits they hold. The legend protagonist must be an adult for uh, stating that an infant killed a dragon may be controversial. Okay. So, huh. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so you can actually say that although you're not the person in the legend, you're the person who owns the legend. You're the person who's telling the legend and you're the person... And, like, if the person who the legend is about does more good things, because you're basically the one who's owned the legend, you're the one who's telling it, you're the one who gets the main bonuses from it? Huh. That's interesting. We'll need to see how that plays out in practice. Uh, realistically, the only one of these that matters for us is Search for Legends, if we were to do this one, because it gets us legend seeds, and given that we don't have a legend, neither of these are really going to matter. But that's interesting. That is interesting. What's weird is, I guess you could have a legend, according to what I've just read, unless I've completely misunderstood it, you could have a legend that another person picks up and then you promote, even if the legend is about you. That is weird. I'm gonna need to see how that plays. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Asta would be fantastic in this role. Gives her a reason to stay around, and it gets us extra prestige, which is lovely. Oh, she's got another task. Oh, regular duties. Okay, that's fine. No, you can do this one. Why would you ever have them on regular duties? Why would you not want them on this? Because Oh, this isn't prestige for us. This is prestige for them. Oh. That's interesting. Okay. No, that's fine. There's still no reason why we would necessarily only want it on us. I guess if you don't want new legend seeds to spawn, you would have it on regular duties. Okay. That's fine. Uh, anything else we need? Food taste are probably not. Night effectiveness is very good, although we have nobody who can fulfill this court position. What does it need to be? I need to be at least at kingdom rank. Okay. So yeah, there's a bunch of these I can't do yet. Wonderful. Well, we've been at, uh, we've been paused for too long. Let's unpause a little bit. Mental break. Okay. Uh, I am gonna just take the stress hit here. I'm gonna completely ignore this event. And hopefully we don't need to worry about it. Hey, this new guy supports us. What does he give us? 
Zero out of, out of a possible zero. Wonderful. Glad for your support. Let's get some raiders. Let's figure out where we're going. I know we're raiding. It gives us a ton of prestige because we're no lo we no longer have um, unraised uh, men at arms as a negative. So, where do we want to go? We got 700 troops. Where can we raid? Uh, Prussia? Probably not. They've just been raided. These guys have also just been raided. Do you have any uh, loot left? You have seven. So maybe. Hmm. So I can maybe raid here. We got 800 troops though. You're a little bit scary. Yeah, there's not very much here. Can I go on major rivers? I might be able to go on major rivers. Uh, the next question is, is there... Oh, wow. Is that a plague? It definitely looks like a plague to me. Um, disease vectors reduced. Okay, yeah, that is what a plague looks like on the map. Oh, that's cool. I was wondering if I might go down here, but yeah, th these guys are all kind of more powerful. Not really great places to raid. We just continue looking along the edge. We may have to go further afield. We could maybe raid here. I think we could maybe beat uh, Sir Sepania. They have not been raided yet. Oh no, they have. They've been raided on this one, but their inland one has three gold left. Wow. I mean, we could go and raid anyway. Hope maybe we capture a ruler or something. You have a little money. Hmm. We have Rana here. Rana has 700 troops. Uh, and no loot. Oh, they have a little loot on that one. Alright, I'm gonna go down to Rana. This, oh, it's, oh, yeah, there you go. So when we're highlighting, you can see where they've actually been raided. So, yeah, we could go to uh, Ksenia here. Could also go there, but they're a little bit too strong. Go back to my army. Yeah, Lubeck's too strong. Could head down here, but these are all bigger nations. Could head to East Anglia. Is that somewhere we could realistically raid? No, Cornwall. We could maybe raid Cornwall at, at a push. At a push we could raid them. Leon? No. <laughs> we could maybe raid Brittany? That looks possible. Um, okay. Maybe, maybe I, um, maybe I try raiding one of these places. Maybe I try raiding Cornwall. Maybe drop in Wessex, raid Cornwall. Is Wessex currently at war with my liege? They are, that's fantastic. The reason it's fantastic is I can drop my troops there and then go into Cornwall. Although I guess it doesn't matter. I don't know how long the, um, yeah, the just disembarked penalty lasts for. Yeah, long trip. So we'll speed five and we'll head down there. Okay. Uh, I could just drop my troops. They now have 900. How about Brittany? Brittany also has 900. Hmm. If I was only to beat one, I want to beat Brittany, right? Because then uh, I can get more, I can, there's more to uh, siege here. But let's see if I can beat these guys. Let's land. Are these planes? Yeah, well, I'm good in planes, so let's go with that. Raid or trade? Oh! As my troops and I prepare to sack the lands of Penithrir, our first scouts report back. It appears, or it seems, the local towns are rich, but many are heavily fortified, and we could well be caught out by vengeful armies before we can break into the juiciest targets. All is not lost, the art of good raiding is all an exploiting opportunity, and we could perhaps arrange trade and tribute in exchange for staying our blades. So I'd say perhaps the local king will be amenable. So immediately we lose a ton of stress, which is nice. We do lose some prestige for this. Uh, we get a truce, but when we get 10 loot. 10 loot is not fantastic, but I do like actually quite like the uh, stress uh, loss. Let's take, let's take that. My offer was rejected. Well, at least I got the stress loss. That's nice. We're leading the army. Let's go. Are they coming to attack us? I think they might be. I think we can win. That's my hot take. We're, we're a good leader. We have good commanders. I think we'll beat them. So does the game. The game agrees with me for the exact same reasons. Okay. And if we win, then there's a ton that we can uh, get here. Okay. So immediately, they have more knights. That's a problem. 
How good are their knights? Their knights are garbage. Okay, that's a positive. Because ours are a little bit better. Uh, on average. These guys are getting countered by our Bondi. Which is nice. These guys are fighting in favorable terrain. Uh, we're getting countered by the armored footmen. But that's okay. Their pikemen are fine. Their troops are maybe a little bit better. Our advantage is much better because we're leading the army. And we're leading in planes. So, I mean, he also gets leading his own army, but he's just not as good at it as I am. Okay, I think we'll win, but it's going to be closer than I want it to be, realistically. Also, I just noticed Leon's raising some raiders. Are they about to raid here? Now that the troops are about to lose a battle? My counselor died. I have a new gaudy. Uh, did you just get spawned out of nowhere? I think he just got spawned out of nowhere. Um, I mean, that's not terrible. Okay. Oh, I wanted to do this as well, but we'll look at that in a second. Okay. We are going to win. Our champion ripped the head off of this guy and became a berserker. Which is great, because that's five extra prowess. Love it. I should also marry off all of my champions. That's another thing we should do. We'll do this stuff when we get back. Wonderful. Uh, so, victory. Uh, we lost 98. They lost 600. That's a pretty big victory for us. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to go inland then to this one. And start raiding an inland. Oh, wait. Can I not go through here? I'll take attrition. I can go through to here, though. Yeah. Let's go through to this one and we can go to their capital next. Wonderful. Uh, this is one that I wanted to do. I completely forgot about it. Rites of passage. Youths of a certain age may participate in a rite of passage, a ritual that marks them as an adult of status in the tribe. So this would be for our second son, uh, which makes a lot of sense. He's 12 years old. You need to be 12 years old to do this. It seems like a good idea. So I'm going to do this right now and see what we can get. He could be a, prov a proven uh, tribal adult or insecure tribal adult. But he might get a personality trait or something. Let's see. Rites of Passage. Time brings new adults into a Norse tribe, but only proving ceremonies establish maturity, status, and worth. Heisinger, my son, is of a suitable age. Our bellicose people have three time of three time honored means of testing his. Uh, in a duel of testing his something, I'm assuming I'm assuming that or maybe meant to be testing him. Anyway. In a duel against another Norse man, we prevail by skill and strength. In sacrification, determination is etched into the skin. In seclusion, we test adaptability and foresight. If Heisinger pass any of these trials, he'll be favored in the eyes of Odin and honored as a worthy Norse man. Well, he's really good at combat, so I think a duel makes a lot of sense for him here. Uh, he, I will choose a duel opponent and he'll duel them. We could potentially go for the wounding option or the seclusion, but I gotta say a duel that seems like the right answer for this guy. We're gonna get him someone to duel. A Norse man must detest fear, reject weakness, and expect to know pain in life. Hey, he's brave. This is great. He's also sadistic. Maybe that'll help with the pain? The young Heisinger has struck blows with other stripling youths, but never suffered the onslaught of a Norse full grown. Many are the stout warfarers of our tribe, but only one may test my son's worth. He can uh, fight his brother, he can fight Sven, or he's not ready. You know, we could fight Sven, who is the worst opponent, but he will of course face his brother. And that gets us some renown here. Let's go. Libations are barely sprinkled when Heisinger launches a fierce assault. Under the hail of blows, Ingvar's experience serves. He lasts out the storm. My young son, soon tiring, gives the fighters all, but it ends this right with iron at his throat. Seeing the fire in, uh, still in his opponent's eyes, Ingvar is gracious. This is a man before me. Struggle, not victory, earns him a place among us. Heisinger has shown a warrior's courage and Norse merit. So say, such is the resolve of the Oster. Okay, so you'll never forget this loss and he will learn uh, that his tenacity has uses beyond the battlefield. So he can gain intrigue, potentially. Okay. Uh, and he might be he becomes an insecure tribal adult. 
The tribe will gain a new champion. It gets him to be an aspiring blade master. He's still insecure because he didn't pass the test. But he gets through it. Or a bloody scrap, a very bloody scrap. Uh, I see a supply counter here, not a fighter. If Heisinger wants to live long. Um, the tribe gains a new champion. He must be devoted to training to better fought, uh, fight duels to come. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Let's go. So, uh, yeah, his prowess should be significantly up. Yeah, so he's at 17, but that's because he has a minus 2 from Wounded. He's going to be a very, very good champion. Let's go speed 4. Just for a second here. They might attack us. We do have significant enough troops that they shouldn't. We need a guardian for our daughter. Our daughter wants to do... We're going to make her do a learn... Oh, can I not change her focus? Why not? She already has this focus. Oh, good. Uh, she's going to do a learning focus because then she can potentially take on the role of our... Um, or our gaudy, although I think it has a different name if it's a woman in charge of it. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, we have somebody quick. She's literally the only person who's got any intelligence in our court. She shall educate our daughter. Let's go. Right, back to sieging. Well, back to raiding. It's not really sieging, but you get the idea. Fire and blood. The settlement of Gwent, er, or Gwenid, Gwenid? Er, an important stronghold in Greater Van, has fallen to my raiders. We have run the vast tracts of land and many of the quivering subjects and shining treasures of Prince Pascutin uh, to choose from. The troops stand ready, awaiting my command to give them direction. Okay, we already captured some prisoners. So we get uh, skilled slaves, which will increase our development progress, which could be good. Bring me bounteous plunder, so we get 30 extra loot. How much do we have right now? Uh, 30 would pretty much fill us up, or we've taken enough already. I guess I'm going to take the slaves. Yeah. I guess I'm going to take the slaves. Because the development progress is the best option. We don't really need the plunder because we're about to go to their capital. And I don't want to lose piety. So. We'll take the stress level. I mean, it's not even that bad. What's level 1? Like, minus 10% fertility? Wasn't happening anyway. Uh, right. We also captured a prisoner. Now, is this guy any good? No. He is god-awful. Can I get some money out of him? No. I could execute him, but that would make me stressed out a lot because it goes against compassionate, forgiving, and generous. We could release him for like a hook, which means we wouldn't lose any dread. Uh, or we just leave him in our prison, maybe for a sacrifice later. I don't know. Uh, let's go attack these guys. Let's see how this goes. Okay. We are going to win, because we won the previous one. It just makes sense. Okay. And now we get to raid uh, their capital. And then we really want to head home, because we want to reinforce our troops a little bit. And we don't want us to be an, an easy target. Although an easy target for who, I'd say, because we have a liege in Upland, so... Should be fine. Also, is Upland finished their... They must have finished th uh, the other war, right? Oh, no, they finished the war over here. What happened? I guess they won. Well done, uh, Jarl Halfdan. I was kind of expecting a pop-up or something, but... Yes, so our side won the war. They've taken a ton of land. That's good, and you're still allied to... No, you're not allied to our leash. Alright, well, whatever. Um, That's fine then. Okay. Well, I guess that's good in general. Right. Uh, are we full up? Not quite. We could head along here and grab, like, the last little bit of loot. Yeah, there's 20 here. Let's head along and grab that and then head home. Right. Let's go speed 5 as well while we're at it. Commander promoted. Okay, so you would like to promote uh, Fulky to our lineup. He has 17 prowess and 18 martial. Very well done. I will recruit him. And even better than that, Arnie, he is actually taking your job. Sorry, Arnie. He's just better at it. Because now we have no negatives whatsoever. We have no negative side effects. It's great. Oh, you're going to attack me? Wait. Did we just... This happens very rarely. Um, we actually swapped positions. 
they arrived on this province at the exact moment we arrived on that province, so we swapped. That's very weird. Oh, also Marshall Perk. Uh, I'm going to take... I know Absolute Control is fantastic for us. I'm going to take Stalwart Leader uh, because Stalwart Leader reduces the risks of commanding armies like death. And given that we're commanding an army, that seems good. It also raises our prowess, which is quite nice. Uh, it's not sure how this is going to go, but I'm happy to do this. Okay, it's become clear that your god, uh, that your godi is working to establish a false and spurious claim on the chieftain of Halsingland. Don't think this kind of dishonorable action will go without response. So we get some negative opinion with a couple of people, with our liege and with the chieftain that we're trying to get a claim on. Well, that's not great, but okay. We did win this fight. Uh, we were actually already full on loot, but I'm happy to keep going here. Um, because we want to get any event that we might get. We didn't get any event. We didn't get any prisoners, but that's okay. Now we're going to head all the way home. We're being raided. Wait. that That's unfair. You're not allowed to raid us. That's cheating. This guy was killed. Wait, was that not my... Uh... No, that wasn't my gaudy. Wait, it might have been. Yes, it was. That was my Gaudi. It automatically created a new one who's even better than the previous two. And it's actually got fantastic stats across the board. Fantastic. Keep killing them. <laughs> we keep ending up with better Gaudi each time. You'd like to pay me 50 gold for this dude? Alright. I accept. You sold me on it. Uh, sparring grounds are still being made. Fantastic. Right. Get our troops back home. Our liege has won their war, which is good. We've arrived back with our money and our prestige. We're going to do a little disband of our army, let them reinforce a little bit here. Good. Uh, now, we do pay for men at arms with prestige right now, right? I believe so. Yes, so we're paying with prestige. So we could, in theory, boost up some of our men at arms if we wanted to at this point. We have a little prestige to spend. Um, I might just do that. Do we want to buy these guys or is there something else that we want? Uh, we could get Ferengian veterans. They're, they're very, very good. They just cost a lot. Like, a hundred of these guys? They're pretty good. You know what? I'm going to buy some. I'm going to buy one one lot of those guys. Just for now. Um, they may even be worth settle, uh, like putting in here. So, again, 13 per person. And there's a hundred of them. Versus these guys, there's 500 of them gaining four. These guys come out ahead. Five. I was just doing a quick like, well, it's five times more, so five times by four is twenty. Therefore, if if these guys are getting um, like thirteen per, then the twenty I, is better, like in terms of overall stats. So yeah, I think I'm happier having the bondy be better. But if we upgrade these guys, they will eventually be better to station. Uh, say, same with these ones in theory, although these ones are only slightly better. Cool. Let's do that. Right. Um, nothing else to build. Let's wait a second here. Sort ourselves out. Uh, my child has benefited from the spouse's tutelage. That's just saying our raiders brought back stuff. So this, you want a betrothal. To the benevolent Solvi, I propose a betrothal between my daughter and heir, Gloth Nurking, and your son, Heisinger Oster. So this guy has offered us his heir in a normal marriage, which means that we will inherit that land. That seems awfully good. Well, he, sorry, he will inherit that land because he's not our heir. But that's still potentially good. So where are you? So you're simply another vassal of Upland. So another vassal of Upland has made us this offer. That's not bad. Um, that's potentially quite good. Yeah. Potentially quite good. What's our succession law right now? It's Confederate Partition. Okay. Not that that matters too much. I was just kind of curious in terms of, like, them inheriting stuff. I think I'm happy for this. I think this is actually absolutely fine. The only negative would be that when she inherits, he would go to her court. Which is a negative. But we would have an alliance. And this is effectively going to be 
like once we get our elective kind of stuff in, this kind of marriage is going to be better for us. Because then we're going to have our dynasty all over the place. And we're going to be able to get all sorts of different claimants in who all have their own things going on. I think I'm happy with this, yeah. And in the meantime, until she inherits, she'll be in our court, which would be fine. Yeah, that, that, I, think, I think that would be fine. I think I'm happy with this. I accept. I think that's fine. And also because he's another vassal of my liege, that's another person who can potentially help us in wars against some of these other people. Like, for instance, if we get a claim on Halsing land, that's a person who can potentially help us in that claim. He has 500 troops, right? Yeah. Him and us, we, we completely outmatch these guys. It's something to think about. Definitely something to think about. And another thing to think about is that this is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.